Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS and welcome to the daily quiz. Today the Hindu is carrying several important articles and hence we are going to look at eight practice questions and one question from a previous year's paper and then the fact of the day. So let's get started with the first question for today. Which of the following statements are correct? In Assam, Brahmaputra Valley is dominated by Assami speakers and the Barak Valley is dominated by the Bengali speakers. The Barak Valley is located in the southern region of Assam. See, both the given statements are correct. So option C is the right answer. According to this article in the Hindu, the demand for bifurcating Assam on linguistic lines is growing louder. See, in the state of Assam, the two major rivers are the Brahmaputra and the Barak. Both the rivers form major valleys in the state in which you find unique demographies to be present. In the Brahmaputra Valley, comprising of Upper Assam region, Lower Assam region and parts of Central Assam, it is the Assami speakers who are dominant. But in the Southern Barak Valley region, which you can see over here that borders Bangladesh, the dominant language spoken is Bengali, which is also recognized as one of the official languages of the state. For several years, there has been a divide between the Assami speaking Brahmaputra Valley region and the Bengali speaking Barak Valley region. This article over here refers to a growing demand by the Bengali speakers of the Barak Valley region who are demanding a separate state for themselves and hence they are calling for the bifurcation of the state on linguistic lines. The Bengali speakers of the Barak Valley have long held a grievance against the Assami speakers of Brahmaputra Valley as they feel that their linguistic and cultural rights are being eroded by the dominant Assamese community. Now let's look at the second question. Which of the following statements are incorrect? Meliodosis, also called as Whitmore's disease, is an infectious disease that can infect humans or animals. The disease is caused by the bacterium Burkholderia pseudomalae. It is a soil dwelling bacterium endemic to the temperate regions of the world. It is also recognized as a bioterrorism agent. Amongst the given statements, the incorrect statement is statement number 3. So the right answer is option C, 3 only. See, meliodosis, or also known as Whitmore's disease, is a highly infectious bacterial disease caused by bacterium Burkholderia pseudomalae. This is essentially a soil-dwelling bacteria and can also be found in contaminated water. This bacterium is largely endemic to the tropical and subtropical regions and not to the temperate regions. It is known to be found in South Asian countries such as India, in parts of Southeast Asia such as Thailand and even in parts of Northern Australia. This highly infectious bacteria is also recognized as a potential bioterrorism agent. So the incorrect statement is statement number three and hence option C is the right answer. See, this dangerous pathogen is in news because according to this article, a South Asia strain of this bacteria has caused a deadly outbreak in the United States and the source of the pathogen has been traced by the US Center for Disease Control to an aromatherapy spray product which was manufactured in India and later sold at Walmart stores in the United States. This India manufactured perfume spray has been identified as the source of a deadly outbreak of meliodosis in the United States, thus raising fresh concerns for Indian exports on the grounds of biosafety. Now let's look at the third question. With reference to COVID-19 and vaccines, how is hybrid immunity acquired? Is it acquired through natural infection and herd immunity? or through natural infection and a single dose of vaccine or through two doses of vaccine and herd immunity or through one dose of vaccine, natural immunity and herd immunity. The correct answer is option B. Hybrid immunity is acquired through natural infection of COVID-19 followed by a single dose of the vaccine. This topic is in news because according to a latest study, the hybrid immunity offered by natural infection of COVID-19 along with a single dose of the vaccine is said to provide the greatest immunity against the pandemic. 
the study has established that in this case of hybrid immunity, the immune response is the strongest and the antibodies produced through a combination of natural infection and one dose of vaccine is said to last longer as compared to those who have got both the doses of the vaccine but are yet to be infected with the virus. This hybrid immunity is said to give an immunological edge as it arises mostly from memory B cells. Because most of the antibodies after infection or after vaccination, they decline after a short period. But the memory B cells which evolve in the lymph nodes of our immune system, they get triggered again on subsequent infection or vaccination. And hence, those people who have recovered from COVID-19, when they get one shot of the vaccine, they are said to possess the highest immunity and this is referred to as hybrid immunity. Let's look at the fourth question. The creation of National Judicial Infrastructure Authority of India was first proposed by the Second Administrative Reforms Commission or the Second ARC by the Niti Aayog, by the 48th Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana or the 21st Law Commission of India. The correct answer is option C. See, the establishment of a National Judicial Infrastructure Authority of India as a statutory body with backing by a parliamentary law was first proposed earlier this year by the current Chief Justice of India. Immediately after Justice N.V. Ramanna took over as the 48th Chief Justice of India, he proposed the establishment of a National Judicial Infrastructure Authority of India. This authority was proposed to address the inadequate infrastructure of Indian judiciary, such as buildings, computers, internet facilities and other basic facilities. The Chief Justice of India identified that the Indian judiciary is suffering from a huge backlog of cases, primarily because of its poor infrastructure, especially at the lower levels of the judiciary. So to address the inadequate infrastructure being faced by the judiciary, the Chief Justice proposed a central law to be enacted by the parliament so that an autonomous national judicial infrastructure authority could be established, which could provide dedicated focus and funding to the creation of essential infrastructure at the lower levels of the judiciary in order to improve the access of the judiciary to the common public. According to this article, the Chief Justice of India has urged the Union Law Minister to take up this proposal in order to get the required law enacted by the parliament in the upcoming winter session. Now let's look at question number 5. The Sugaru Strait connects the Andaman Sea with South China Sea, South China Sea with Gulf of Thailand, South China Sea with Philippine Sea or Sea of Japan with Pacific Ocean. The correct answer is option D. Sugaru Strait connects the Sea of Japan with the Pacific Ocean. See, the Sugaru Strait is in news because according to this article, Russia and China have conducted a major maritime security exercise in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, particularly near the Sugaru Strait of Japan. You can see the Sugaru Strait located over here. It connects the Sea of Japan with the Pacific Ocean and it separates Japan's main island and its northern island of Hokkaido. As the western navies led by US, UK and other European countries and Japan are conducting more and more military exercises in the South China Sea, near Taiwan and in the Pacific. Russia and China have decided to counter them by conducting their own military and naval exercises which are focused upon the Western Pacific Ocean. Now let's look at the sixth question. The Bangabandhu Friendship Exhibition Center in Bangladesh has been funded by India, European Union, China, Japan. The correct answer is option C. The Bangabandhu Friendship Exhibition Center, which was recently inaugurated by the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, has been funded by China as a part of its Belt and Road Initiative. This exhibition center has come up on the outskirts of Dhaka and it is set to promote economic relations and trade relations between China and Bangladesh. This project finds a reference in today's article where India's Foreign Secretary has provided a summary of India's relations with Bangladesh and this recently inaugurated high-profile project also finds a mention in the article. Now let's look at the seventh question. 
which of the following statements are correct the great oxidation event was a time period when the earth's atmosphere and the shallow ocean first experienced a rise in oxygen the event is inferred to have been caused by cyanobacteria both the given statements are correct option c is the right answer see we have an article under the science and tech section in the hindu which refers to the impact of asteroids and comets in influencing the formation of earth's atmosphere the article points to scientific evidence which shows that strikes by asteroids and comets triggered chemical reactions and biological processes on earth which led to significant changes in the composition of the earth's atmosphere this article also makes a reference to the great oxidation event which refers to a time period when the earth's atmosphere and the shallow ocean experienced a rise in oxygen levels for the first time this great oxidation event is said to have occurred in the paleo proterozoic era during which cyanobacteria started releasing oxygen leading to increase in oxygen levels in the earth's atmosphere and in the shallow oceans and due to rising oxygen levels several anaerobic species were wiped out and it later created an opportunity for multicellular organisms to evolve now let's look at the eighth question what best describes the term hot jupiters extremely high temperature on jupiter as it approaches the sun hot and gaseous moons of the planet jupiter jupiter like planets beyond the solar system or basically exoplanets with similar mass structure and orbit or a class of gas giant exoplanets similar to jupiter but having very short orbital periods due to their close proximity to their stars and high surface atmosphere temperatures the correct answer is option d it provides the best description for the term hot jupiters see this term has been mentioned in an article in the hindu and hot jupiters are nothing but gas giant exoplanets located outside of the solar system which are very similar to jupiter in its mass and structure but their orbital periods are very very low and in some cases it is less than 10 days because these planets are located very close to their stars and as a result they also have high temperatures according to the article these hot jupiters have been studied by researchers by using evidence gathered through the observations of the hubble space telescope now let's take up a question from the 2020 prelims paper with reference to the history of india ulgulan or the great tumult is the description of which of the following the revolt of 1857 the mapilla rebellion of 1921 the indigo revolt of 1859 to 1860 or birsa munda's revolt of 1899 to 1900 the correct answer is option d the term ulgulan refers to the rebellion which was organized under the leadership of legendary tribal leader birsa munda seeking the protection of tribal rights including land rights against the british authorities in this revolt the tribals under birsa munda not only targeted the british but they also targeted the land lords and the jagirdars now coming to the fact of the day let's talk about zero budget natural farming which finds a mention in this article according to the article women farmers in himachal pradesh are expanding their income by adopting low cost natural farming techniques such as zero budget natural farming so let's understand what exactly is zero budget natural farming see this is a method of chemical free agriculture that draws upon india's traditional agricultural practices but please do not confuse this with organic farming organic farming is slightly different from zero budget natural farming this farming methodology was promoted by popular maharashtrian agriculturist subhash palekar and the methodology gained a lot of acceptance and popularity first in the state of karnataka it was developed by subhash palekar in the mid 1990s as an alternative to the green revolution see during the green revolution which began in the 1960s and 70s the government focused on ensuring india's food security by boosting agricultural productivity with the usage of high yield variety of seeds along with chemical fertilizers pesticides intensive irrigation and other expensive inputs according to subhash palekar 
the introduction of these inputs raised the cost of agriculture and farming thereby pushing farmers to borrow loans and credits which pushed them under a severe debt burden thereby resulting in farmer suicides as well plus according to subhash palekar these chemicals and fertilizers and pesticides were having a detrimental impact on the environment and on soil fertility so he pioneered a traditional farming technique based on traditional indian practices known as zero budget natural farming the main priority of this method was to end farmers dependency on loans by drastically cutting their input cost to almost zero so if the farmers need not spend anything on the inputs then obviously they need not borrow loans thus ending the debt cycle for farmers so the term zero budget essentially refers to zero loans or zero money being spent by farmers on inputs instead of these artificial synthetic inputs zero budget natural farming promotes natural and traditional applications such as jeevamruta which is a mixture of cow dung cow urine jaggery pulse flour water and soil this mixture is fermented to create a microbial culture which is then added to the soil which is supposed to improve the nutrient levels in the soil this is also believed to act as a catalytic agent to promote the activity of microorganisms and earthworms in the soil which further drives up nutrient levels in the soil then another mixture known as bijamrita is used for treating seeds which is basically a mixture of neem leaves pulp tobacco green chilies etc and this mixture is used for insect and pest management but however this methodology has been questioned by experts as there is no scientific evidence to back these methodologies and several scientists and agricultural experts believe that dependency on zero budget natural farming will actually bring down agricultural productivity so there are both proponents and opponents to this method of farming but however it has become quite popular in india especially in southern india in states such as maharashtra karnataka telangana andhra pradesh and tamil nadu so with this let's conclude our discussion for today thanks for watching